Hey, babe. This is my wife, Caroline. I didn't just kiss a stranger, I promise you. That usually doesn't go well. So today on Leg Workout, we are going to be talking about the biggest mistakes from your leg training. Now, those legs were not built off of mistakes, I promise you. Or maybe they were, and she's just really genetically blessed. I married her for her genetics anyway, so. <laughs> so, we're gonna be running through this. I hope you guys enjoy this, and it's going to be little things that you may have not caught on to at this point, and over, all my injuries over my period, I have learned I've aged way too quickly. So I hope you guys don't sacrifice all the injuries like I did. So for a warm up, we're going to be doing hyperextensions for glute focus. You can do back extensions as well. It's essentially the same exact movement, but we're going to be focused on the higher end. Now I do like using bands to add additional pressure at the top of that movement. So take it. Simple as that. Or if it's not even enough for you, you can go around the middle of it too. Notice how she's activating her lumbar all the way up into the back. The glutes aren't contracting as hard either, even though she is trying to contract the glutes, but she's getting more work in here, putting pressure on the disc actually. If you arc too hard, you can actually injure your discs over time. It contracts that. Oh. That was the wrong way, that hurts. If you do it like that too many times, I guarantee you, you're gonna have a hard time getting out of bed in the morning. It sucks. So stick to the right way, focus on glutes. She's keeping the back rounded so that you don't activate the lower back at all. So if you'll notice that she's driving with her glutes and driving up. Once you get complete contraction off the glute, she's going back down. So this is the proper way to execute. So one thing that people do wrong a lot is they don't drive their hips. This is essentially a hip flexion. Um, if, you want, if you want to get into it, then you can think of almost like a pelvic thrust or a pump motion where you drive, where you take your hips and you rotate your hips forward and you get the drive. So that's how you engage your glutes. Is it always going to be a hip flexion? So you, you drive it forward, you drive it back. You drive it forward, you drive it back. That's how you activate or deactivate the glute. You're not working out your back, you're working out your glutes. The glute is going to be a hard contraction. So when you're halfway up, you're essentially going to contract your glutes to drive you up further. If you want to work into your hamstrings, you'll flex the glutes, rotate the hips forward, and then you'll pull through the hamstrings. But you want to keep your back neutral at all times. And again, uh, on legs, we're doing a lot of major compound movements. One thing I want you to really focus on is making sure that you feel the movement. The number one way to create hypertrophy and to overload a muscle is proper execution. So you do want to make sure that you feel every single muscle fiber contracting. If you're not feeling contracting, then most likely what you're doing is you're taking pressure off of the muscles and you're putting it onto the joints, the tendons, the ligaments, and then you're going to get really old quickly like me. So this is our second warm up. We warmed our, our glutes and our hamstrings before we did anything else. That is always how you want to start off your leg workout is glute and hamstrings to prevent back and knee injuries. So now we're moving on to quads, which we're going to be using leg extensions to warm up our knees yet again. And you're really getting that mind to muscle connection more so than anything else on our quads. One mistake that I see a lot on leg extensions is one, a good cue is you push away from your body and it will naturally come off and activate your quads. Two, people sit too far over the seat. Another mistake that happens on leg extensions is that people have an optical illusion because of this, I'm sitting next to you, that they don't put their feet evenly on the leg extension. So if you notice, I'm looking at my shins to make sure it's even on the pad. So distance in, distance in. Just like every other movement, but don't get thrown off for this. I'm telling you, it creates an optical illusion because you want even tension on your legs. So one thing that Caroline does really well is her feet constantly stay in alignment. They don't move, they don't go up, they don't go down. So they're staying locked in. Another thing she's doing well is activating the quad. So you can see it goes from lengthened to contracted, but where a lot of people go long wrong again is they don't contract it all the way into the hip. So if she flexes, flexes there, boom, that's all the way up. So you notice she wasn't doing that until I just touched her there 
and then she lifted her straight up because she was able to create that mind and muscle connection to get the entire quad activated. We're going on to the next one. All right, so we're gonna talk about a big mistake that people do on squat. Now, if you look down on my feet, you notice I am out of my shoes now. So if you notice, when people go to squat, it rolls. This is terrible for you because what happens is when, you're, when it rolls, your knee rolls with it and you damage your knee. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is you wanna plant your foot, take your toes, and you grab it into the ground. And notice when I go to grab it into the ground, my knee and quad actually flex because it stabilizes you and it rotates out. It forms a natural arch. So most people will have terrible angle flexibility. And the number one thing that I recommend for angle flexibility is this right here. I call it cradling the baby. Grab onto something, sit in the hole, grab your toes again. And when you screw, it rotates the knee. So it protects the knee, right? And then it protects the hips. So it's all coming from, coming from the ground up. Another thing that I see people doing wrong a lot of the times when it comes to leg pressing is that they put too much pressure on their toes. They don't drive through their heels. Keep constant tension on your heels and drive through your heels. Your toes should still be touching at all times. Do not let the toes back off of it at the top of it. Keep constant tension because it keeps the tension on your feet. Or keeps the tension on your legs at all times. In studies, recent studies, they've also proven that partial reps actually are better for hypertrophy and gaining muscle tissue. So, fun fact of the day, something that a lot of people don't know that they say is always go full range of motion. Leg press is a movement in particular that they have proven that partial reps actually do make a difference. So, talk about aging really quickly. Something that I did wrong in the beginning of my career is I decided I grip my teeth really hard when I lift. It's actually a correlation between true strength and jaw strength and how hard you can bite. Well, I broke two of my front teeth off, so these are now fake. So retainer and save yourself the money. So some common mistakes that I see on lunges. One, a lot of people stand upright. That is perfectly fine. But when you start leaning back and stuff like that, that's no good. I like to have a slight lean forward to keep constant tension on the legs. Also takes pressure off that lower back for those of you that feel pressure on the lower back. Sad. Another mistake, if you don't look like that after one set of lunges, you're doing it wrong. So this is worse than cardio, I promise you. So one other thing that people do wrong on lunges, talk about how dangerous it is on your knees. Well, yeah, if your knees are caving in and stuff like that, then it's bad. So you wanna take a slight step out and let, again, the knee pass over the foot, just like a natural movement as a squat. Same thing with lunges. So it's shoulder width and drifting out, not in. Never in, always out. I hope you guys enjoyed this video on biggest mistakes that I see common during leg training. So, getting legs like those, don't be in a wheelchair like me by the time of 40. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment. I'll see you all in the next video.